Hi everybody and a very very warm welcome to the start of the Legs Matters Awareness Week and what a week we have planned for you. Um, it's my great privilege to be here to kick it off at the start of the week. Uh, my name is Leanne Atkin, I'm a vascular nurse consultant at Mid York's NHS Trust which is in Yorkshire um, and I'm a clinical nurse still and I work in clinical practice three days a week. Um, and I'm the current chair of the Legs Matters campaign. So it's my absolute delight to be here with you. Uh, we have a jam-packed week planned this week. Um, so we've got seven live events every single day. So please, please check out the website um, and also register for as many of those live events that tickle your fancy. So the first live event this week, we thought it was really important to kick off with is what to do if you have a knock or a sore that isn't healing. So I'm just gonna share my screen with you and hopefully you'll all be able to see that without an issue. Um, so um, this session really is suitable for anybody and we are welcoming everybody to this. So whether you are just a general member of the public, whether you have something that you're concerned about on your own leg, if you're a member of the friends and family and um, that you're, you've got some concern about, if you are a clinical uh, practitioner, a nurse, a podiatrist, uh, even a doctor who's wanting to know some more about um, knocks or sores on the feet, this session's gonna have something for you. So I think the first thing that I just must warn you about is actually to talk about wounds and knocks and sores, that these slides may have some wounds within them. I haven't put terrible wounds within them that's gonna cause you huge distress, but I think I should warn you that there are gonna be some pictures of some wounds within this. Um, I'm very grateful for all of my patients who's provided written consent for me to be able to share these pictures with you today. So we have to start of what is a knock or a sore, because what you classify as a knock or a sore, you might refer, your nurse might say, is it a wound or is it an ulcer? And actually these words are all used interchangeably. And sometimes I think we do this just to confuse our patients. So it doesn't truly matter if you call it a sore, a wound or an ulcer, it all means the same thing. And please, please don't be frightened if your nurse does refer to it as an ulcer. All it means really is that that wound um, needs addressing in a slightly different way. And throughout this session today, we're going to try to bring together all wounds on the lower leg. So whether you have a small wound on your toe, like on this picture, or a small wound on your leg, we're trying to bring together what to do with all of the wounds that could happen below the knee. So we need to really think about why do wounds occur? And they can occur for many reasons. So you can see this first picture that that's just a traumatic wound. It's a, they've caught their leg on something and it's resulted in what we call is a classic skin tear. You can see the skin rolled up, but actually, even that type of traumatic wound on the lower leg needs a very certain standard of care because that skin tear has got a huge chance of actually developing into a chronic non-healing leg ulcer that might be there for weeks, if not months. So there's things that we need to do, and we class that immediate and necessary care to actually prevent that from cascading down and to make sure that that heals. Because a wound like that should heal within seven to 14 days. We have wounds in the middle that just look like a small sore on somebody's foot, on the dorsal of the foot, that just keeps erupting again, crusting again, healing over. But those types of wounds really give clinicians a huge cause for concerns because a wound shouldn't heal then erupt itself again. There must be something going on underneath that's causing that, that makes us think we need to do things differently. And then even that final wound on the far side where you could have had a burn or a, 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 a graze on your leg and it looks like that and you think, do you know what? This wound should go on to heal. Again, there is many things that we can do to optimize that leg to make sure it does heal. And it's about giving clinicians 
and patients and family the right information of the right care they need at the right time. Because if that leg is showing any signs of edema, if there's any pain in the leg before the wound happened, if there's any swelling, if there's any skin discoloration like brown staining, that wound has got a high chance of developing into that chronic non-healing wound. So again, there's things that we can do earlier on in the pathway. And this all comes because actually when we talk about the lower leg, what is really vital is circulation. And many patients report back to me, I've got terrible circulation, you know, and often they don't. Remember that circulation in a medical term incorporates two separate systems, the blood supply, so the heart's ability to get blood down those arteries right to the foot, and the blood return, the ability of those veins to be able to move that blood from the foot back up to the heart. And you can see the veins, the arteries labelled in red and the veins labelled in blue on this diagram. But in the middle of that, there is what we call a capillary network, which you can see on that picture next door. Because many patients think it's a closed system. So if you've got pressure in one side, you have pressure in the other. Pretty much like having a central heating system at home. And it doesn't work like that. The two separate systems that's connected by this capillary bed, but it's certainly back pressure in one wouldn't lead to back pressure in the other. But what does happen is if there's a problem with the arteries, you get a lack of blood supply to that capillary bed. So therefore you can have problems with healing. And if there's a problem with the veins, you have an engorgement of that capillary bed, which pushes blood products out into the surrounding tissue, which can cause the swelling and the staining of the skin. Because what gets forced out into that surrounding tissue is also blood. And within blood, there are three components in blood. There is water, plasma, and as that gets pushed out into the surrounding tissue, it causes edema in your legs. Edema is not normal. Edema is not part of the aging process. You shouldn't be getting edema. If you are, there's something that can be done about that and should be done about that. The second thing that happens when blood gets pushed out into the surrounding tissue is that the red blood cells can start to leak out. And the red blood cells is the one that contain the haemoglobin that carries the oxygen. And basically, haemoglobin, in the simplest of terms, is iron. And as the iron gets pushed out into the surrounding skin, that's what causes those brown staining. Originally, it starts to look like a freckle that grows bigger or starts to discolor, but it doesn't look like a normal freckle. And over time, that freckle can actually spread and you can get a rather large area or even all the ankle looks that browned and stained. And that is a sign that your veins aren't working as they should. The third product of blood is the white blood cells, the immune response. And if they start to leak into the surrounding tissue, they start to cause inflammation. Imagine just something irritating your skin constantly inside. Well, that's what the white cells will do over a period of time. And that's why you can get the redness around your ankles or around the wound. And actually, to help to get any knock or sore or wound or ulcer to heal, we need to think about, is it the arteries? Is it the veins? What's happening in that capillary bed? And what can we help you with to get these NOx or sores to heal? Along with that, as you know, there are many other factors that influence your body's ability to repair and heal. And the major one really is as we get older, that healing response becomes a little bit delayed. There's very little you can do about getting older. But there's many other factors that you may recognize that you suffer from your patients suffer from or your family suffer from within this list. And all of these actually 
increase your risk of that knock or that sore not healing and being there for a long period of time. So I say to you, if you have any of those brown stainings or those knocks and sores, along with any of these lists, it's like an episode of bingo in a way. The more that you can demonstrate, oh yes, that's me, the more I urge you to seek intervention because the bigger risk you have in terms of that wound, that knock, that sore, not healing. Within the NHS, within any practitioner that you see, whether it's a, actually a paid podiatrist, whether it's a NHS podiatrist, whether it's an NHS nurse, a walking centre, we should all be dealing with these wounds in a standard fashion. We have cleared recommendations given to us. And the first recommendation we have is whether we should call this a foot ulcer or a leg ulcer. And you can see there whether we define your problem or your family's problem as a foot or a leg ulcer. And that's important because actually that drives you down two separate streams of care. This slide really is more for one for the clinicians out there. And when I talk about how to care for patients with knocks or sores, actually what you need to be doing is following the guidance that's provided by the National Wound Care Strategy Programme. Patients, family, you're more than happy to read this. It's in the public domain. And if you believe your mum or your dad isn't getting care as it should or that their wound isn't healing, I urge you actually to read this and ensure your family's care is in line with this programme. If not, I'd be questioning why. Because we know across the NHS at the moment that what we're doing actually isn't that optimum care. And actually by standardising the way that we heal, we manage patients, actually offers the NHS a major opportunity. It offers an opportunity to you know, reduce the burden of need on the NHS, reduce the spend from the NHS point of view, but actually it reduces the patient's suffering because sometimes what we're doing is actually elongating patient's healing rather than concentrating on getting them healed as soon as possible. And that's what this document does. So for most patients, actually, what they do is actually they get a, a wound on a leg. Foot ulcers are slightly rarer, but we've got clear recommendations of what we should do with them. But the majority of patients actually get wounds on their legs. And the majority of those will be because of venous disease. So the blood is pumping perfectly well to the feet, but it's not getting from the feet back to the heart. And this clinical image here shows a classic venous leg ulcer. And I say that because you can see the brown staining. You can see the slight redness around the brown staining. So the brown staining was caused by the red blood cells leaking and depositing their iron. The redness around is caused by those white cells leaking and causing that irritation. But actually, if you look up that gentleman's leg, you can see a massive varicose vein. And actually, it's the varicose vein, if you like, that's not working well. So the blood should move in segments up the vein with valves. So it chunks up and never backfills. But when you have varicose veins, actually, the valves can't meet in the middle. So therefore, you get the blood actually chunking downwards rather than going upwards. And it's like really having the tap on full. When you have a varicose vein and a venous leg ulcer, what we need to concentrate on is turning the tap down. So I like the definition of when we have a venous leg ulcer, we should treat this as a weed. And I say that because really, we have clinicians out there that simply put in dressings on top of these types of wounds. And the dressing will never heal the wound. Even the dressings that patients love, such as the honey dressings or the silver dressings, none of them will heal a venous leg ulcer. What's needed for a venous leg ulcer is actually to control that blood return. And that works by compression bandaging. And the analogy is you wouldn't go out on a morning and simply chop a dandelion out of your garden every morning by simply treating that wound. Actually, what we need to do is to treat the veins the weed, the roots, if you like, of that weed, because it's the roots that's causing this problem. So 
if we talk about what good care should look like, I think it's a great starting point to think about if I develop a knock or a saw, what should I expect? If I have a knock or a saw, what should I be receiving? Or if I have a patient with a knock or a saw, what should I be doing? And actually, good care should include a full holistic assessment, including that thing that's called a Doppler test within 14 days of that wounding maximum, absolutely maximum. And actually, what you should be given is actually a diagnosis of the underlying cause. So is there a problem with the arteries? Is there a problem with the veins? We should all be recognizing which of those many factors might influence your ability to heal or your patient's ability to heal and think about how we optimize those or control them, such as reducing tobacco intake, ensuring if you're a diabetic, you've got strict glucose control. Those things can really help a wound to heal quicker. But we also need to be ensuring that we are cleansing the wound and the surrounding skin. This is one thing that seems to have been thrown away from nursing over the last few years. But if you've got a knock or a sore in your leg and you're receiving treatment from a nurse, that nurse should always cleanse your wound and cleanse your surrounding skin. It's part of good care. It's about reducing the bacterial burden around the wound, therefore reducing the risk of infection and ensuring that skin is well cared for. We don't need to really concentrate on what dressing is the best because there is no dressing that's the best, but the dressing certainly should hold the amount of exudate or leakage that's coming from the wound. If you have a saturated dressing that you're removing or it's leaking through as a patient, it's not appropriate. There are many more better dressings, if you like, with increased absorbency or we need to change the frequency and therefore renewing these products on a more regular basis. It is never fair and it is never right that a patient has a wet saturated dressing. That is a sign of bad care and we need to improve the management. But actually what's really important is those bits that I've talked about. It's that thinking about that underlying cause. So on a leg wound, quite often there's a need for compression. But please don't be scared about compression. Don't think it's gonna do a patient harm. Please don't think it's going to be uncomfortable. There are many options with compression. And actually what we need to do is we need to treat that internal inflammation to get this wound to heal. Same as you've got a foot wound, actually, the most important thing with a foot wound is to stop the friction of the wound or the load pressure when you walk. And your podiatrist may use things like offloading devices to ensure that we are optimizing that healing. But the one thing that is really important is that early escalation. So 14 days from when you enter your GP surgery or your healthcare provider for that full holistic assessment, including that Doppler. If they're saying we've got no room, we can't be doing your Doppler for six weeks, we need to be calling that out because in a way that's delaying the right care. It's about urgent escalation. If they can't do the Doppler or they haven't got the equipment or they don't know how to offload the foot, they refer you on to a practitioner who can do that instead of keeping you within that service. And the reason for that is time is of the essence with wounds. Really, we should be healing every wound within the first six weeks and actually, that's the maximum window of opportunity to heal a wound. Once you've had a wound for more than six weeks, the chances of us healing it start to diminish greatly. And actually, if you've had a wound for six months, healing becomes very difficult indeed. So time is of the essence. Really, within the NHS today, we shouldn't be managing wounds. We should be questing healing. Because even if you've got a wound that looks like this, which looks quite large, or one that looks like it's got black tissue on it, or one that looks like a toe is terribly infected, actually, with the right care, you can get this wound to heal within a matter of six weeks. We can debride those wounds to get them to have nice healthy granulation tissue, and we can settle down the infection. And actually with a diabetic patient, 
the urgency of that cannot be stressed enough because actually without the right care, these patients can end up losing toes, if not legs. So it's not all bleak, even if you have a nasty wound at this moment in time, there is a wind of opportunity that we can manage this with you to get this wound to heal. And if you are a practitioner out there that is simply managing wounds, not questing for healing, I ask you to have some inward reflection and really think about what are you saying in terms of that you manage wounds well. Nobody should be managing wounds well, we should be healing them well. So the key really is, is ensuring that we have escalation processes built in, that actually you as a patient or a family need your entering your first point of contact, and that will often be a podiatry, a practice nurse, a district nurse. If you feel the care isn't what's expected, then the next stage is actually contact your GP to question with them if you need any onward referral. If you feel that the quality of care that's not been provided isn't in line with what we've talked about today, I urge you all to speak to your locality matrons or your practice nurses. These are open to you as a clinical professional or as a patient or a family. You're more than welcome to speak to these people to raise your concern. There is always a process of referring on for specialist wound care or specialist podiatry input if these wounds aren't healing within that time frame. And it's not a way of saying that as a nurse you've failed. It's actually just saying that we need to prioritise escalation to get these patients to heal. We have scattered across the UK specialised wound care clinics, which are run by multidisciplinary teams. And we have the quest of being able to refer to the highest of specialists such as diabetologists to really focus on glucose control, vascular surgeons to think about your circulation or your venous return, and even plastic surgeons to help us actually to cover these wounds. But those specialists can only intervene if they've had a referral for that patient. So please think about that earlier escalation in pathways. So what we need to do is focus on that early intervention because there is a wind of opportunity there which shuts very quickly. So if you have a knock or a sore on your leg, please don't think that, oh, I will be okay. If that leg is showing signs of any varicose veins, swelling, edema, skin staining, or if that wound just doesn't look right, right please, please seek early intervention. If you've got a wound on your foot which isn't improving, or if you're a diabetic, I urge you all, please, please seek that early intervention. And you'll find a summary of all that I've talked about today within um, the Legs Matters website. And I urge you all to have a nose it at that. So hopefully we've been managed to be able to locate some questions at the same time. So I'm just going to try to stop sharing my screen. And then hopefully, by the time I click back through, we may have some questions for us. There's, Fantastic. There's six in the Q&A, uh, Leanne, and a couple in the chat. Fantastic. So I'm not too sure I can read the Q&A. You might have to read them to me, Legs Matter Support, but I can certainly see one um, in, within the chat. So um, so somebody's put that there are... Um, 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 an F2F in, in training. So for anybody else that doesn't know, but that's basically a what we classify as a junior doctor. So it's somebody that's out of university and um, within the hospital and is training, let's say, on site with us. Um, absolutely. Um, they're, so they're asking, can they learn more about compression therapy? Of course you can. And it's something that I think that really uh, we need more engaged medical staff to do. You know, compression therapy comes in many ways these days. We used to really mystify it in many layers of bandages, many twists in different turns. But actually compression therapy now comes in the form of stockings that anybody can put on or compression wraps that you just pull on yourself. Even the compression bandaging, actually the systems that's got like um, rugby balls that turn to golf balls that are dead easy to put on. We urge patients to apply their own stockings and their own wraps. 
And actually, we get many unregistered nurses now applying the compression bandages. For me, as a, as a doctor, I think that your actual, your greatest impact would actually just be recognising that it's a leg ulcer, that it's got venous disease and the needs to be compression therapy. So I actually rather than you being the bandager of the future, I want you actually to be that doctor that goes beyond that to actually think about, oh, this isn't a wound. I think this is a venous leg ulcer, therefore it needs treatment as X. I'd like you to be the doctor that's able to recognize this is not acute cellulitis. Actually, this is venous inflammation. And there's lots of different sessions that's available to you online that hopefully we'll be able to, to do that. Um, we can see if there's one locally that you'll be able to shadow in the Warwick area. I'm sure we've got, we've got followers across the UK. Um, so I'm sure somebody will be able to uh, reach out for you. Um, could you have a copy of the recording? Somebody's asked, yeah, it's going on our Legs Matters YouTube site. Uh, and also it's going to be on our website. Um, so, um, uh, of course. Um, there's a next question saying, would GPs be aware of the national strategy? Um, the answer to that is there should be. Um, but, you know, I think that um, there's many other things been going on in the GP's mind over the last um, 12 to 24 months. Um, so, you know, I think it's something that really um, we should be trying to pass on to our general practitioner colleagues. I do believe every practice nurse is aware of it and every district nurse is aware of it. Uh, but actually getting it out there to such as target events, I think, has been a bit stalled. Uh, but again, there's free links. So I would urge you all to share it with your GP colleagues and try to get it on your local target sessions if you can. If you are a patient that's struggling, by all means, download it, print it out and take it to your next GP appointment. Sometimes GPs quite like that because sometimes GPs recognise they don't know what they're doing with the leg ulcer. And actually, if you could come with the recipe of this is what they should do, actually, some GPs may find that helpful. Um, so um, somebody's asking, uh, there's still some delays in that Doppler assessment, and some people are saying it takes six to eight weeks. I urge you to look at your pathways of care because it's six to eight weeks of lack of care. It's elongating that patient's suffering and actually just increasing the burden of the NHS. So I urge you all to look at your timelines in terms of trying to get that done within that two week framing framework. What I would say, though, is if you are a healthcare practitioner, this isn't for patients. You can actually assess for red flags according to the national wound care strategy and actually apply 20 milligrams of mercury pressure without a Doppler. But that has to be somebody that's able to recognise the red flags. I don't think it's something that I need to go through today because I think it might confuse the audience. But if whoever's asking that question is a healthcare professional, have a look at the National Wound Care Strategy. There's lots of education about red flag assessment. Um, and, and yes, then you can apply a degree of compression. There's another question saying, what if off offloading? So um, offloading it, it, it is a very interesting thing. So if you imagine when you load normally there are pressure points on your feet often the pads of your toes the pad of you where your uh, your bones sit on that fleshy part you often don't actually load on the middle bit of your of your foot and you load back onto your heel let's say you had a wound on this part of your foot where you load a lot what we do is actually we give you a device that takes the pressure off that area so we might give you an insole and actually cut a big ring in it. So you load everywhere else, but not on that area on your foot. We can give you a shoe actually that's got no back sole in it. So actually you load on the front of your foot. But this is quite specialist. Podiatrists are fantastic at this. Um, and, you know, ensuring that you've got pressure, proper loading as in the insoles of your shoes can really help wounds to heal. But it can help generalised pains of your ankle and generalised pains of your back too. Somebody else is asking, what would you recommend for uh, cleansing? Is, is tap water still acceptable? Um, yes, tap water is still acceptable and it is still common practice across the UK. But I urge you to really think about cleansing in tap water because if you're cleansing in tap water, can I ask you tonight, are you just going to wash your armpits in water? No, you're not. You're going to use some form of soap, aren't you? And I would urge you all to be using some form of cleanser when you're washing a wound because it's the best way to get rid of the bacteria. 
And when I talk about a cleanser, it could be a wound wipe or it could be some form of surfactant. But I urge you all to think about what you're cleansing with because we know we need to reduce the bacteria around the wound and on the surrounding skin. So if all you've got is tap water, it's acceptable. But I'd say quest yourself a little further by going um, uh, further. Um, somebody's asked, can PALS help? So absolutely, the patient liaison service can really help. And so can your local MP, believe it or not. If you believe you're not getting the care you really require, it needs escalating. Please don't sit there and think this is how it has to be. It doesn't have to be. And actually, as a clinician, if I get a letter or an email from PALS, we have to respond within an hour. If I get an email from an MP, um, so they go to my chief executive. My chief executive emails me and I have to respond. So there are ways actually to get a clinician's response. Please don't go to that as first point of call. Please try to work with your clinician to build up that relationship. But if you feel like you've tried that and you've explored all options and the care for your family isn't as it should, escalate, escalate, escalate. You know, nobody's going to tell you off for asking for the right care at the right time. Um, there's somebody asking for handouts for the presentation. I'm not too sure that we're, we're Legs Matters are going to be doing handouts, um, but we'll, we can see. And then there's another question saying, if the GP doesn't respond to the above, how soon should you escalate? Well, I would give anybody just seven days before escalation starts to kick in. Um, it, it, it's about moving that patient on. Let's just say if you had a patient with a rip roaring infection that didn't settle down within seven days, your GP would refer it on one, and they refer it into a, an infection disease doctor in the hospital or even admit them. If you had a patient with a cancer, they'd admit them and escalate them. We should be doing the same thing with a wound. If it's not getting any better, we should be escalating and escalating as quick as we possibly can. So believe it or not, my 30 minutes is up. Good grief, what a quick 30 minutes that's been. I hope you enjoyed the session. I hope that actually this inspires you to be the best clinician you can, escalate your patients, give the best possible care. If you're a patient out there, I hope it's given you some information in terms of what care you should be receiving and how really to ensure and that if you have got a knock or a sore, that you get the right care at the right time. Please don't forget to check out the rest of our live sessions. It's been an absolute pleasure being with you and thank you so much for supporting the Legs Matters campaign. Bye bye.